Hello, my name is Robert French. I'm a 3D printing applications engineer with Go Engineer, and today's video is FDM vapor smoothing and its effects on part strength. This video is one of several in a series where we look at taking some ABS parts, exposing them to acetone, and analyzing the results. Today we've got three sets. We've got some normal, vapor smoothed, and brushed ABS parts using acetone in each case, and we really want to look at what effect are we having on strength. In a blog I've written before, I theorized that since we're taking some material from kind of the peaks of certain layers and pushing those into the valleys of others, that we might see an increase of strength because we've got increased bonding area. So let's take a look at the parts we're gonna be analyzing, how we've treated them, and then finally the results. Here's the parts we're gonna be testing strength on. These are very typical shapes for a tensile testing machine. And I've printed out quite a few of them to make sure I have several examples of the normal vapor smoothed and brushed types. Here we see the actual brushing of these parts. We want to make sure we're using smooth, even, consistent motion. So we're having a uniform distribution of the acetone. And when we look at the after results, we can really see how the peaks of some of the materials have been pushed down into the valleys giving us increased bonding strength between the different rasters or the different tool paths. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll be familiar with my vapor smoothing station setup. We can see two of the parts placed inside, getting vapor smooth. I expose them for about 25 minutes, making sure they get plenty of exposure time and get smoothed over. And when we look at the results here, we're not quite getting the same push from the peaks of material down to the valleys, but definitely a glossy shined over finish. We know we've kind of melted some of that material and hopefully gotten some better bonding between the different tool paths. Here's a video of one of our parts in the tensile testing machine. How this part broke is very representative and typical of how all the parts broke. Where we see our thinnest section of the part is its weakest and it simply shears away pretty cleanly. The videos don't give us much information, so let's take a look at the numbers. We tested three parts from each category and averaged the results. For normal ABS, we see around 532 newtons before failure. For vapor smooth ABS, we see about 545 newtons before failure. And for brushed ABS, we see about 580 newtons before failure. So we can see a pretty clear increase in strength as we expose the part to acetone and increase the surface area of contact between layers or rasters. But I think it's also safe to say if we expose the part to too much acetone, we could eventually decrease that bonding area and start to destroy our part and weaken its overall strength. Though we didn't see a significant increase in strength, vapor smoothing is most often used to increase the visuals or optics of a part. So it's nice to know that in accomplishing those goals, we're not sacrificing any of our part's strength or functionality. Also, the part was printed as we see on the left side of this tray. So when we threw it into the tensile tester, we're actually testing the XY strength of the part, which is already typically its strongest orientation. We could try printing the part as we see in the vertical orientation on the right, which is kind of an inefficient print, but our Z direction or orientation is typically our weakest and where we might see the most increase in strength if we were to vapor smooth or brush. I hope you enjoyed this video on vapor smoothing and brushing of FDM parts and its effects on strength. My name is Robert French. Thanks for watching.